Hello, hey. man. How are you? I'm doing well, Gray. How are you? Oh, well, not too bad. How is the fair? I know that you stepped away from that for a second for our chat today. Yeah, so far so good. It's actually going to start at 11, right, in BBB atrium. Um, okay, so we've perfect. just been setting up and getting ready for to meet with students uh, for the next three or four hours. I think it goes until about two or three this afternoon. Sounds good. Very exciting. Well, I'm jumping into conversation already. I didn't give you the chance to introduce yourself or That's even okay. introduce our talk that we're having. So, <laughs> of course, this is our our fourth Tuesday talk. Um, Tuesday talk. Obviously, it's a Wednesday, but hey, we make do. Um, so these are, of course, our 15 to 20 minute conversations we're doing about every week this semester, just to chat with some of the offices on campus and share some resources. I am, as always, Gray Strain. I use they, them, or she, her pronouns, and I am one of the staff academic advisors here in the CSC Undergraduate Advising Office, and I am joined today by Matt Hancock. I will pass it over to you, Matt, to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your role within international programs and engineering. That sounds great. Thanks, Gray, and thanks everybody that's watching today. Um, again, my name is Matt Hancock. I'm one of the International Program Advisor Coordinators in IPE, which is International Programs and Engineering. And so our role is to really assist undergraduate students with um, obtaining some kind of international or intercultural experience. Um, so that might be a summer abroad, it could be a semester abroad, like winter 23, um, internships, volunteer, uh, student org travel abroad. So we really assist any students who are looking at either some help or um, just some approvals for those international experiences, whether it's coursework or just travel logistics. Um, my specific portfolio consists of a lot of our programs that we're been partnering very closely with the EECS department. So we have a brand new program that's going to be running this upcoming winter semester um, in Prague, one of their providers or one of the staff from the provider is actually going to be at the fair today, too. So anybody who's interested in that program, definitely try to stop by today at the BBB um, so that we can help answer any questions you might have right now. Um, but I also help with the international minor. So I know we've got a good chunk of EEC students who are also in the minor. And so just assisting with um, degree audits and progress towards completion as well. Of course. So yeah, you're not doing too much over there. Just a really small order. No, I was just waiting, just go. twiddling my fingers, just waiting for the emails to come in. Um, no, it's been really busy, but it's also nice and refreshing to be back on campus and a lot more activity and energy. So I think all of us, it's a culture shock, uh, whether you're a student or staff with the full floodgates opening and all of us just being back on campus, but it's a good, it's a good vibe going on right now. So it's, it's nice to be back to a little bit more normalcy um, compared yeah. to the last couple of years. So Definitely. Well, I just saw in the in the comments, cheers from Madrid. So if other folks are nice. wanting to sound off on where they're at, maybe in their IP experience, of course, feel free to do that. Um, I do want to jump into some of the questions. And I know at some point we're going to talk about Prague, like you mentioned, because it is a great new program. Sure. But I'm just curious, you know, I know that, like you said, this is a whole lot. You know, there's a lot of pieces to this process, certainly in planning and even, you know, going through um, as far as how courses work and all of that. I'm just curious for students interested in studying abroad, um, kind of how can they you know, approach planning? Can you walk us through the timeline for applying for an experience, what the planning process entails for students? Yeah, that's a great question, Gray. Um, I would say we've got a lot of webs or a lot of resources on our website. And so one of the newest um, marketing materials we've created this past summer is just that, a winter application timeline. And so I'll show a quick screen example of it. Obviously you can't read it from here, um, but on our website, it's right on our homepage, ipe.engine.umich.edu, uh, I wanna say. Don't, uh, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but on this uh, overview, it does give you a really good idea of what that planning process looks like. And so obviously one of the biggest pieces that can take the most amount of time is for students who are looking at doing a full semester abroad and going through the transfer credit approval process. Um, some programs, it's a little bit more rigorous than others. And then there's programs like Prague and get used to it. We're gonna be talking about Prague a lot during this chat this morning um, because it is a great program for, uh, for CS students. But that program, we've already done a lot of that legwork, worked really closely with the on-site providers and the, um, uh, you know, the, the academic and support staff on, on-site in Prague to mirror U of M's syllabi. And so they really created a lot of the courses based on our syllabi from UM. Um, feedback that we received from the department was also taken into consideration to further refine and make those programs and those courses as closely aligned to, to being on, on campus in Ann Arbor when it comes to the curricular side of things. Um, but really, it's never too early to start planning, especially for each students. I think traditionally, 
it's been a little bit trickier to work through some of the transfer credit when you're upper level. Um, so ULCS credits those have been a little bit harder to kind of manage, but we are getting some more headway and making some more gains with getting those courses approved. But the earlier you mentioned your interest in going abroad, whether it's for a semester, for a summer, um, the earlier you mentioned that to an academic advisor, whether it's in the EAC or one of the, the staff um, with Gray, that's the best time to really mention it and start planning um, as, as early as possible. So we always have walk-in advising in the afternoons with peer advisors who can help you navigate what programs might be the best fit for you, whether it's academically or personally. Maybe you wanna, um, you know, for our heritage seeker students, maybe you're, you're from a country where we have a program and you've never been there or traveled there. And so that might be your driver. Um, and others, it might be, oh, I need to take this exact course or this exact degree requirement and we can assist you with selecting the right programs, but never too early to start mentioning those interests, see what's out there because most of our programs are relatively static and are offered every year. There might be minor changes, um, but you can get a pretty good lay of the land even right now for what's gonna be offered this upcoming winter and obviously in the summer as well. Of course, yeah, and, and for winter 2023, uh, deadlines are approaching, right? They're coming up pretty quick. Yep, that's right, Grace. So our deadline is going to be September 15th for some of our programs. So some of our more popular programs like um, Comias in Spain, uh, UNSW in Australia, and then this new program, the Tech Career Accelerator in Prague, all of those have a deadline next Thursday. Um, we do have some other programs that uh, have a deadline of October 1st. And then one of those programs that's also pretty friendly and pretty accessible to EECS majors is NCO, which is in France. That has a little bit later deadline, but the, the more popular programs that we have, those, those primary three, the deadline will be next Thursday. Okay, yeah, and, and just a, a quick question. For a student who maybe is just starting the process, um, is it too late to you know, have the application submitted by next week? Should they plan for those later programs at this point? I don't think it's too late, no. Um, I think, okay. you know, obviously start the application sooner than later because there are a couple of requirements, one being that you meet with the lead advisor for the program and all of our contact info is provided in that follow-up email after you've actually started an application but we do require you have some kind of advising appointment with us prior to the deadline if at all possible just so that we can review the timeline make sure you have a good understanding of what the application looks like um, but the the deadline is really so that we can get the application started get the admissions notifications and processing applications but if you haven't figured out the course piece that's quite all right. You've got the rest of this semester to sort through any kind of course approvals and working through the transfer credit approval form um, over the course of October, November, December um, to do some of that. So definitely not too late right now, but definitely start that program or that application so that you have a good idea of what's ahead of you over the next week um, in terms of like the application checklist. Absolutely. I think that's important advice here because I've certainly had students asking about um, Prague in particular, which mm -hmm. we've hinted at multiple times and we'll, we'll chat about soon. But yeah. I am curious, you know, thinking about some of those programs outside of maybe Prague or, or kind of that program you mentioned in France, what do course equivalencies typically look like? What could a CS student, for example, or a GS student expect when looking at some of those course equivalencies? Yeah, so there ultimately there's about three different results to come back when students submit a course for evaluation. So after we've received the, the transfer credit approval form, it gets routed to the appropriate department. Um, and at that point, the department is really going to review it to see how much overlap there is. So sometimes we'll get courses that um, get approved for an exact equivalent. That's going to be the easiest process for students and advisors to navigate what degree requirements they're going to fulfill. And so that's why Again, this program in Prague and the NCA program, they're great because they do have direct equivalents. They've already been approved. There's less of that navigation or that gray area um, about, oh, well, will this fulfill the specific requirement or is it going to not count towards my degree? Um, so that's the easiest one. The middle ground is um, departmental credit. That's where there's a little bit more um, discussion that needs to be um, had with the academic department, with your academic advisor to learn more about exactly what degree requirements a departmental credit might fulfill. And so with the tech program in Prague, you'll see that a lot of the courses that are electives are approved as either 300 level or 400 level departmental credit. It's really up to you as a student to have a conversation with the academic um, 
academic advisors to determine exactly what fulfill or what fulfillments you'll, you'll be able to obtain through that. The third result that you'll get from a transfer credit approval form is just not transferable, meaning there's just not enough content or overlap between the two courses to really accept any kind of transfer credit. Um, and so for in general, I think, you know, all of our programs, they're still pretty, um, it's not too late to submit some of those transfer credit approval forms. For each students in particular, we see a lot of students who maybe want to um, get a couple courses approved for ULCS. Um, that can take a little bit of time just to review all the various course materials, including the syllabus, um, exams, um, written assignments, some like examples from that for the, the department to make an informed decision. But other popular courses are some of those, those core courses that most students need to take, whether it's like some of the math courses, like 200 level, or maybe like a stats course. Um, obviously the intellectual breadth requirements that we all have, uh, I guess I'm not a student, so I can't say we, but the students have in common, a lot of students will fulfill at least one or two of those intellectual breadth requirements in most cases for a full semester. And then those of you who might be doing the international minor, you can also fulfill requirements for the minor through an international experience, even if it's not like a tech related course um, and more of like an interculturally focused course. And I appreciate those pieces and, and definitely, you know, as far as giving time for a TCAF when it's necessary and also connecting with advising, especially around departmental credit, you know, there are some instances in which it can be used, but those are quite restrictive, at least yeah. for, for CS and DS. So again, being sure to touch base well in advance. Um, and I, I do want to talk about the international minor in a second, sure. Um, for sure. Um, but I actually want to switch gears to see if we can talk a little bit more about Prague and maybe some other programs that you'd really recommend, you know, for CS or DS students, particularly a question we have in the chat um, from Jake. Um, does the Prague program currently get you any ULCS? Um, short answer, yes, it does. But I will pass over to Matt to chat a little bit about kind of some of those really great course offerings. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, yeah, so there are, um, I believe, all of our elective courses, with the exception of the entrepreneurship elective course, are approved for ULCS, um, which is um, pretty new with regards to the department and just the IPE's program offerings as well. And again, we've worked really closely with our overseas partners to get those approved as, as ULCS. Um, but the other main component of the PROG program is that you can also fulfill your MDE, your, um, your design experience. And so the required courses as part of the PROG program is that you take an intro course, like a one credit course in in Czech language. And so that's really just so you have a little bit of like a functional understanding of language and kind of try to interact a little bit with locals and, and extend that, you know, gesture of uh, trying to speak the local language, which is really important. Obviously, Americans get a, a bad rap and maybe still an accurate rap that we expect everybody to speak English, whether we're in the US or it's traveling abroad. And so having that gesture of trying the local language really can open up a lot of doors and really help you to have more authentic interactions with the local culture, having them see you try their language and not just expect everybody to speak English. Um, the reality is most people, especially in Europe, do speak English, um, but just having that small icebreaker of saying hello in Czech or um, thank you or any kind of, you know, just one or two, two words really does go a long way, believe it or not. Um, the other pieces are, um, there's a leadership course that you'd be taking, a technical uh, writing course. I'm also just refreshing my memory on this one too, but there's a, a leadership development for the tech sector course. You also will do a tech ethics and then the communication for the tech sector. So those eight credits would then fulfill the MDE requirement for CS students. Um, the NCA program, which is the program that's also pretty conducive to each majors, has a lot of courses um, that are approved for direct equivalency to each courses, but they don't have that added benefit or feature of being ULCS approved or having that full package of the MDE that's already going to be bundled into the, the PROG program. Definitely that MDE piece, you know, alongside some of those upper level credits, like you said, definitely unheard of, very new, um, and I think really exciting for the students that we've already talked to. Definitely. So I know we're kind of coming up towards the end of our time here. We do want to chat about the minor uh, mm -hmm. in a second, sure. but I do have another question in the chat. Um, if there are any other um, places, any other study abroad experiences that have kind of built in approved ULCS for students? So nothing that comes to mind in particular. I know there are a couple of 
instances, one that comes to mind is like Canterbury, which is in New Zealand, where I believe there's a couple that have a fraction of a ULCS, like so maybe like 2.5 ULCS mm -hmm. um, uh, credit approval. The best way to find some of this information is through the course equivalency database. So the College of Engineering maintains an international database. So it's separate from LSA's domestic equivalency database. And part of the columns are what you can search um, for each university that you might be interested in going to would have comments about what ULCS or degree requirements, intellectual breadth, how those courses really will come back. And so it's very few amount that have that ULCS approval, but there are a couple others if you aren't looking to to really, you know, double down on getting some of those ULCS and MPE approved or excuse me, completed through Prague, you can still make progress towards some of those ULCS requirements through a variety of our other programs that are offered in the winter. I appreciate your redirection to that, that resource, the course of equivalency. And I have to make the joke of Prague rest, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, but it was right there. You know, I held back when uh, when I was talking about gray area, I could have gone down that path too, but it's like, eh, you know, we'll it's, save it, so. it's, it's easy. And, and sometimes I would say it's great humor. There we go. See. Occasionally. Um, I'm sure people are now leaving um, the chat left and right. Uh, so I do want to jump back to talk about the international minor. I know we've mentioned it a couple of times. I'm curious what that option looks like for engineering students and what that entails. Yeah. So it's a 15 credit minor, like most other minors in the college. Um, the, the major components are that you're foreign language proficient beyond second, well, fourth semester. So for example, Spanish 232. So you've either completed Spanish 232, um, maybe received credit through AP or through transfer credit or even a placement test, but ultimately through four semester language proficiency. Um, the other major components are a six week or longer international or intercultural experience. So we have expanded our minor to not only focus on international, if you're able to find a domestic experience that's still very intercultural um, in nature. So for example, maybe you wanna go and either work, research, volunteer or intern on a, a Native American reservation in, in Michigan, we'll work with you to make that kind of experience also approved for the international intercultural experience um, requirement. And then the other major component is um, there's two one credit courses that are offered in the winter and the fall semester, Engineering 260 and Engineering 460. And so these courses really are, are, are designed to help you identify international experience if you're still navigating, you know, what options might be available to you, but it also assists you with some of the ethnographic approach. So how do you approach people different from you, whether it's internationally or just domestically, and ask good questions and, and practice and, and utilize those active listening skills. And so it's, it's a good course, even if you're not interested or you change streams and you end up not de declaring or pursuing the international minor, Engineering 260 is still a great course for all students because it allows you to to start making those connections between um, some of the coursework or some of the approaches you're currently taking on campus and how you can kind of expand those or apply those to more of a global workforce or more of an intercultural um, setting. And then the other requirement is, um, depending on how many language courses, is you've got to take between seven and 11 courses that have been approved for intercultural coursework. So that's really just focusing on a non-US culture. Um, the, the nice thing about our minor is we really, try to make it align really well with the rest of your requirements you're, you might be doing. So you can double count any courses you're taking within the COE towards our minor. So if you're, um, you know, you're, you're 300 level humanities for intellectual breadth, you can find a course that's more internationally or interculturally focused, have it fulfill both of those requirements. You might be able to find a course abroad that's focusing on maybe global operations or um, global systems engineering, more of an IOE focused course that can still count towards maybe some of your flex tech plus the international minor. And so we want to make it as, as easy as possible to obtain our minor, which is by no means supposed to increase your academic rigor or how much effort you need to put into your current coursework. It's really just providing you with the focus of, all right, you've got all these electives or these courses to choose from. Why not have it more of an intercultural or international focus as opposed to some other main theme? Because obviously all of us are going to find ourselves in a very... Um, very intercultural experience and setting as we well here on campus and as we are make our way across um, across the globe after we leave campus and graduate as well. So those are the four major requirements. Um, we do have a nice flyer that kind of outlines that 
I can meet with students about the minor and kind of do a quick um, eyeball of, okay, well, if you decide to declare the minor, this is about where you're at with all the various requirements. So always happy to have those meetings or those conversations as well. Of course, and yeah, I really like that, that piece about you know, the importance of kind of the intercultural awareness and that we are kind of all gonna be global leaders in some way, especially within computer science right. and data science. I think those are fields that are really ripe for that. So really appreciate that option in the minor. I know we're at the end of our time here, but I do wanna give you, you know, a chance. If there's any like closing comments, advice you have that you wanna share with students or around IPE or you know, study abroad experiences. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And again, everybody, thank you for, for joining today. Um, glad you were able to, to stick with us. And I hope a lot of the info has been um, helpful for you. But I guess the last thing I'll say is, you know, if you're going to be around BBB today, we do have our fair going on from 11 to 3. Stop by, um, ask questions, whether it's about some of our winter programs or other opportunities. We're more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, we also are going to be doing an info session next Monday for that tech pro that that Prague program. Um, and so, Gray, if uh, if we haven't already provided that info to you, we'll get it over to you, and you can send it out or post it to your social media or other avenues. But we will have um, some of the on-site representatives providing more information about the program, what housing looks like, what it looks like from a, a student uh, student perspective of of the program. And the other nice thing about that info session is, as I mentioned earlier one of the requirements for our application is that you meet with an advisor to review the application. Obviously we're about a month or a week out from that deadline. If you attend that info session next Monday, 11 to 12 um, virtually, we'll fulfill or we'll mark off that required advising appointment as complete. So it's a good way to knock out that requirement prior to next mm -hmm. Thursday's deadline and still get a lot of really good info from the program organizers as well. Sounds great. Well, Matt, I appreciate you talking with us this afternoon or morning, rather. What is time at this point in the semester? Well, for, for the guy um, for the, in Spain, it's afternoon, so. Oh, yes. I'm also um, cheers to Madrid over here as well. Um, I will say you know, we're so excited to be doing this series. Um, next week, we will not have a talk. Um, we will have one on September 20th. Tuesday, September 20th at 12 p.m. with the Engineering Honors Program. So another great resource um, to get some information about what's available on campus. And they also have, I believe, a global leadership component. So we're just following this theme uh, right on through. But thanks again, Matt. Appreciate yeah, your time. Perfect. Thank uh, you. This will be posted on our IG and the YouTube. So if you're watching this later, thanks for tuning in outside of our live portion. Take care. Yeah, thanks, everybody.